Follow Miss Shira's classroom rules. We take it back old school style where corporal punishment is exactly what you're going to get. And this would be a billet belt purchased at a livestock store. It's a double ended belt. And trust me, it hurts like a motherfucker so bad, whatever that was, jumped across the room just to get out of its way. So, because you're not in person, a few of you are testing my boundaries and limits. And this is what's going to happen to you, especially when some of you have pissed me off all fucking day and I get to you at the end of the line. It's like you're at the end of formation and, well, Commander Cher is fucking tired by the time she gets to you. So here we go. Apparently one of you hit me up. You seem to be a little intellectual, quite a bit, I don't know, good looking on top of it. And I let you slide a little bit. And then I warned you about a little pet name you called me that men call all women they come across, whether they're attracted to them or not, particularly when they're trying to be sassy and sarcastic. So here we go. Let's do that. Uh, this would be some voice clips of what just occurred in my inbox. And uh, so we'll see how this ended up playing out for Mr. Jordan. And if you're like, well, which Jordan is it? It might be your brother, Jordan, your friend, Jordan. And I don't really care who, Jordan. You can look on my friends list, but you'll see it's blocked and private from you for a reason. I will not reveal their last name because in these voice clips, which I address you by your name, so you're fully aware that I'm speaking to you and addressing you personally. So apparently Mr. Jordan uh, has been on the defense about anything that I've told him that he seems to be doing that's upsetting me today. And uh, anything that I say that says, okay, I would prefer you not to do that or say that, uh, you seem to be approaching me in the wrong manner. Uh, he comes back with a very defensive retort, and this is my response to him when I tell him, do not refer to me as blank. It's disrespectful to me, so please do not do it. Now, the moral of the story is not to just not disrespect me, but I talk to lots of women all the time, and I compare stories with them, so when you think, Huh, Miss Shira sure does seem to be easily offended. If you can please me and my fucking high standards, I promise you, you'll get a lot of women that you want that might seem outside of most people's league because you're giving her something many men are not. So here we go. He laughs when I tell him not to call me that. So here we go. Hey, you seem to have a bit of a problem here with your defensive behavior. Uh, yours is defensiveness to being corrected. Mine is telling you how it might trigger someone into feeling a certain way. And women won't tell you often how they feel. They're shut down on their communication because they get dismissed for it, just like you did to me. Except I'm way older and wiser, and I give zero fucks what anyone thinks. If something triggers me, it's because I care enough to tell you so I can be around you and you not continue to do it. It's to further advance you in the game of life in general and the game of Shara. I never said you could only call me Shara, and we do love pet names, the original ones. Not the ones that make you sound like every other dude we heard that day, uh, who also may have treated us like shit in bed and it puts us in that moment. So you sit and think about that for a while. I'm getting real fucking tired of it. We're done for today. I also talk to a lot of women. If you think 10 years and three dungeons seeing women and how they're treated, some women feel like baby sounds like slut. Some people hate the word uh, just as much as they would hate the word slut. Some women love to be called slut and whore. Some women love to be degraded. Other women like to be built up, and that would be me. So when you put me in a moment and I actually tell you, before you tread there again, let me tell you why. You've not talked to women who say, yeah, they do it all to me too. And if you've been with the amount of men that I've been with, they all say it, even when I say don't. And I'll let you get away with it if you do it in a moment of pleasure or pain and you can't help it. But when you do it and you mock me after I tell you no, now you get to see what it feels like to be in trouble. By Miss Shara, if you would like to address me again, you will do so with the respect and authority that I have, not just over you, but over myself in general life, being an instructor in many areas and a mentor over people of all ages. And now you know the next step in the game if you want to go into the peppermint forest or we can go back to a more simple game than Candyland. Okay? 
So I'm teaching you how to advance with me. Because if you can get with me, anywhere with me, <clears throat> I promise you, Mr. Jordan, you can get anywhere with just about any woman you want. I'm teaching you how to properly fish with a bait to catch the shark in the sea. And you're using minnow bait from time to time and getting a little pissy that the shark won't pay attention. Now stop and bring me something meaty and worthwhile, or you can go back in the pond where the little fish are. Got it? Mr. Jordan came back with a, I think you misunderstood me. And you know what I said? I did not misunderstand you. And I did a 24 hour mute and I did a screenshot of it, popped it in his direction and said, you're on mute for 24 hours. You know what he came back with? Six video clips of an excuse to say that I must have misunderstood him and be just a ghost friend like everyone else. And I said, look at the common denominator. Now, enjoy your block. Thank you for coming to Miss Shara's classroom. Listen, the good students get rewarded. Um, if you're going to bring me an apple, I like the green ones. I'm a bit of a sour bitch. He wants to be my buddy for today. I need a little assistant, like my little Chucky doll.